What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another Game of Thrones a card game second edition video for you. This time we're in the top four at AFK Games, the Michigan Regional, brought to you by these people that support the channel at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you so much for your support everyone. In this one we got AJ playing Stark Fealty against Adrian, playing Lannister, a Lord of the Crossing. So we've seen both of these decks so far, both these players in the previous videos in the series. You can check them out in a playlist on YouTube at Rob's Gaming Table. The winner here will face the winner of the next video you'll see posted in the final. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Hit that like button for more Thrones. we got the Hound, Sir Armory Lorch, and a Great Hall on the left for the Lannister player. On the right, the Stark player set up a Begging Brother. So no bestow. And a dupe, Catelyn Stark from the core set. Along with a Rose Road. So will the Lannister player a rush past the Stark player? Or will the Stark player be able to handle it? And use some wolves to maul the Lannisters into submission. We will see. Stay tuned. <laughs> so trading with Matoshi. Uh, flipped on the Lannister side. Big economy. Wants to bomb out some big dudes most likely. Giving three gold to the Stark player there. And the Stark player playing Noble Cause, which is not a bad uh, econ plot to play out of Stark since they have lots of cheap and expensive lords and ladies. And quite a good spread of them, so you're most likely going to have one uh, in hand if you want to start with that plot. So we get a King's Road popped on the Lannister side. Lannister player obviously going first, gets Jamie Lannister in play. And still has, looks like, eight gold to work with. Are we going to see the dreaded Cersei on the first round with a Jamie? And no, it's Tyrion. Okay, we don't have to vomit in my mouth here like I thought I might have had to uh, if I saw Cersei and Jamie to start there. But then again, I don't see any dupes on any of them or any bodyguards. And there's Shay. On the other side, though, we got Catelyn with a dupe on her already, so... I mean, if the Stark player wanted to Valor, it's not looking too bad next round. I mean, the Hound is obviously going to jump around unless you somehow prevent that. But you probably want to wait till you see a Tywin or a Cersei. But, I mean, Jaime and Tyrion. And if you can snap the Hound in the dead pile, uh, that's a pretty good hit, I think. But, I mean, Shay, Armory, Lorch are probably just one-ofs, so you don't have to worry about them too much. So we got Bran on the other side. It's uh, the Direwolf uh, Bran, the one that gives the icons and stands them when he kneels for his effect. I really like how we're seeing that Bran now in Stark decks uh, when the other Bran is like the... One of the reasons you play Stark is just to have access to the core set brand to cancel events. But to see him not being played in some Stark decks is actually quite refreshing, and I'm very happy to see that. And who is this? Wolves in the North. They got stealth. They got that ability. When they stealth past someone, they can reduce their strength by the amount of dire wolves they have in play, which is just one. I mean, it still does at least one, which is not bad. Can definitely help you get through a, an additional challenge. Sometimes that's all you need is that minus one strength. So AJ, the Stark player, still sitting on four gold, but debating if he wants to go any wider here. Just checking out icons, checking out the characters across the board, seeing what he can defend. Maybe thinking about what challenges he can actually stop, which ones he can then get through. And he's put out Nymeria there. I believe that's who that is. I think she has Intimidate, but I could be wrong. I'm just going to look that up quickly. I think that's it for marshalling. Over to the Lancer player for his challenges. Or her challenges, sorry. My bad. Power is starting for one with Shea. Minus one for crossing. I'm 
So yeah, that Nymeria does have Intimidate and no attachments, and during a challenge which you control a participating star character, Neil, Nymeria, and any number of Direwolf characters, to have each of those characters participate in the challenge on your side. So very sneaky Intimidate, just jumping in there on you. So that went unopposed, it looks like. The Lancer player uh, scored a power there for that. And now an Intrigue, Stealth and Catelyn with Tyrion. Uh, getting two gold off of Tyrion's ability, of course. Begging Brother will block the unopposed. And a Winter is coming. Sniped on the Intrigue claim, and that is a good hit in my opinion. Sure, AJ could turn those winter winter is coming uh, events into two claim militaries, which could be a problem for a crossing players trying to make their board fairly wide to do all three challenges and hopefully defend some also. But if you're uh, thinning out that board, that's when crossing decks start to struggle. So a military of fifteen here with the hound and Jamie getting the plus two buff each off of uh, crossing forced reaction there off the hound going back, so it goes unopposed. And so it gets two power, one for crossing, one for an opposed, renown on Jamie, and the begging brother will die for claim. And over to AJ the Stark player here for his challenges. So military stealthing Jamie with the wolves of the north. And they get, uh, Jamie becomes a three strength. Is it just for this challenge or is it for the face? Or the just for the challenge. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, at, 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 under the face. I'm sorry. Under the face? Yes. So he is. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'm Lorch blocking for four on the military. And Nymeria sneaks in as an action after defenders are declared to add another three strength to the challenge and intimidate. So, right. so, oh, so she doesn't have to be in the challenge. She can make herself join in. Can any, herself and other, other die wolves. Yeah, okay. yeah, I've been caught by that uh, once or twice myself, forgetting about her being on the board. Well, that's the thing with Star Stark. I like that theme of how they can jump uh, characters into challenges that maybe they're not supposed to be in, which I think is pretty cool. And there's a treachery on that. And then Bran stands, and she comes back oh. in. Well, you canceled it. Yeah, I canceled it. And I'm it. standing her, and I'm going to use her action again. Oh, okay, so that can't, doesn't count. Yeah, the action's not limited, oh, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it should be able to do it again. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Right. So Bran standing and Nymeria, and Nymeria's back in there. And Armour Lorch... Dying for claim, but uh, intimidate I don't think is enough. Actually, the dire wolves came in with six. Jamie's only a three. Oh yeah, never mind. <laughs> Armory Lorch is a four strength, isn't he? So an intrigue coming in with Jamie, and uh, Jamie is no longer five strength. He was uh, reduced by the dire wolves of the north. There, the wolves of the north. So, unopposed is blocked. And we got entry claim here, which is just a Western Fiefdoms. Nothing special. I'm at four cards? Five. So, we got another top four game coming up on the channel after this, then the finals. And then uh, we should have some Montreal, uh, Quebec regional coverage flowing on the channel after that, assuming that I went there this weekend as of the recording and got some more videos for you guys. And then following that, we'll have Rochester, New York's regionals on August 25th coming up. And I'll have some videos hopefully from there up on the channel. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for all that stuff. And there's that little alarm uh, alarm bell icon beside the subscribe button to be notified when new videos go up. Uh, otherwise, just subscribing, you won't get any notifications. Or you will, but they're random. 
Um, we got Force Marsh on the Lancer side, False Spring on the Stark side. Oh, False Spring, which one's that? The, you reveal three cards, and then I choose one to discard. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll have my card go. My spot go first, it's fine. So it sounds like Lancer player is going first. And we have Force March kneeling Nymeria. And she's not going to kneel Jamie to kneel another military character. And the Burn Men are uh, what's discarded there off the False Spring. And we saw two Cheerians chains were the other, other two there. Now that can get pretty gross. If the Tyrion's chains are used uh, on Force March here. So there's the Hound marshaled out. And that's going to be it, sitting on two gold. So no Cersei yet. And no heads on Spike's play yet either. So it's interesting the way Adrian's gone for a, uh, a military path here using Force March. Just put some pressure on her opponent with military challenges. Still get all three challenges off, most likely. Just a little slower without Cersei being out there. And Rob Stark is in play. With a dupe. Uh oh, two characters on the board with dupes. And no dupes or bodyguards on the other side of the board. Now, like I said before, I don't know if AJ's playing Velarmo Gulis, but uh, that could really cause some trouble here for the Lancer player if, uh, if that's flipped uh, next round. So Intrigue with Shay for one strength gets two gold off Tyrion. Trying to bait Catelyn into the challenge. And there it is. He's got some nice cards in hand. He does not want to lose. So Catelyn will come in and block on the defense. Here's the worry. You, you didn't start with military as a Lancer player, so now you got the reaction off Rob Stark that could stand all the Stark characters if one is killed. <coughs> but I mean, you'd kill a wolf or Bran, which is not the worst thing in the world, but then you got Catelyn standing back up. And most likely one of the wolves will block your unopposed, maybe. So I think she might should have started off maybe with military. Unless she's sitting on a treachery in hand. Then uh, you don't really have to worry about the Rob Stark ability too much, but there is one gold across the board on the Stark player's plot, so hand judgment could be a thing. She could just stand Shay and poke another challenge in. So now we got military for 11 coming in with the Hound and Jamie again as the second challenge here. And then blocking for eight with Rob and uh, the other wolf. So he's betting on standing his board, I assume. Hound will go back as force reaction. So claim is Bran, who can come back from summer, of course. Uh, hopefully in the future. And Rob went to be triggered, but uh, immediate treachery on that. So she was ready for it. So no worries. Now the board is completely nailed. She doesn't have to worry. No need to trigger the Force March using Tyrion's Chains, that's for sure. And gets the crossing off unopposed. Power challenge unopposed. 
Got another renown on Jamie there. Went in the military. And the Lancer player is six power away. Stark player is sitting at zero. He's feeling the pressure. But like I said, if he's got a Valar Morghulis in there, I mean, it, you know, it's it's just Jamie and Tyrion, that's all. But it's her entire board just wiped there. And she's only sitting on one great haul for economy. And most likely played one of her only econ plots in the uh, 10 gold trading with Bintoshi. We know probably sitting on a couple heads on spikes plots. Which I'm sure she's looking to flip right now. And yep, heads on spikes into Wolves of the North. So that's how Bran's going to come back with Summer most likely. Or not, sorry. Um, uh, if it's cost three or less. Wolves of the North. What is this plot called? Is it Wolves of the North? No. A time for wolves, is it? Yes, time for wolves. So I'm trying to say. Milk of the Poppy grabbed on the heads on spikes, not a character. So that was a big miss. But I mean, a milk that was, I'm sure, waiting for Cersei Lannister. If she ever makes an appearance. And Bran is back to hand from Summer coming into play, of course. Oldest trick in the Stark book. So Lancer player going again first. And we got the Hound marshaled out again. The Hound. Surprise. A dupe. Oh no, a bodyguard. Sorry, on Jamie Lancer there. And on the other side, we have a Heart Tree Grove Flea Bottom. It's three gold or less for Flea Bottom, right? So you would be able to bring it back to the other side. But you can't bestow them when you do that, correct? Yes. Oh, you can? It's any time to answer play. Oh, okay. But the Bacon Brothers are in the dead pile. They're talking about bringing out the discard pile, but uh, you can't bring him out with Flea Bottom. Unless there's one in the discard that I don't know about. So Bran is back. And two gold saved on the Stark side. Over to the Lancer player for challenges. Oh, he's dead, not discarded, right? Do you have any in your discard? No. Okay, cool. Yeah, nothing in the discard pile to target for Fleet Bottom yet. Just setting it up for future use, I'm sure. I'm sure your plans on losing some intrigue challenges. Maybe some characters will happen to find their way in that discard pile. So military with Jamie Lancer for four. No hound coming along for the ride. Now he can still defend it and have plenty of military icons ready to go. Or he can, you know, block just enough to oppose it, kill someone, stand with Rob Stark. But there is a gold sitting on that plot card. Lancer has seen two treacheries already. So we got a block with Summer and Nymeria successfully defended. Two strength intrigue with Shay, getting two gold off Tyrion. <laughs> uh, same situation here. We have Catelyn Stark that can block, but then again, Bran can give an icon to a direwolf and stand them. But uh, that's not going to be the case here. Catelyn will just jump in front there, defending the hand. And 
And Shea gets stood with a uh, dollar there. So, power of 10 strength with Shea and Tyrion, stealthing Rob Stark. And Bran will block the unopposed. So Tyrion's chain for heads on spikes trigger here. No superior claim. A winter is coming. No character. Oh, man. And she got her crossing. No power claim, though. No power claim, though. Two winter is coming uh, events now in the Stark players discard pile. Neither played. Both hit with heads on spikes, I think, or one hit with entry claim. So military stealthing the hound with wolves in the north minus three strength because there's three wolves on the board using the wolves in the north ability. So it's an eight, eight strength military challenge. And you got Jamie there who can defend for five. Does he have another winter is coming? That would be disgusting. That could be what AJ needs here to get back in this game. He may also be trying to trap the hound in play. Which might be smart. Maybe Shea dies for claim. Or the bodyguard on Jamie and then leaves open for a... Oh my, we have a put to the sword on Tyrion. Here we go. So now it's just to choose a claim target. You'd think it'd be Shea, but maybe... Maybe she needs it for the extra challenges. Nope, she kills Shay. And we're now on Jamie, unopposed. And dominance to the Lannisters. Four away from winning. Stark's only at two power. So two heads on spikes misses. That could have been the difference for the win right there. But we know she has another one in the deck. The only problem is how she how she getting her challenges through that that wall of Stark Stark characters there. We'll see if she can or not. So March into you win or you die. March makes sense. Gets rid of the Hound or Jamie. So March the Hound. March Summer. And it's Jamie alone on the board right now. And drawing two cards from you win or you die. And then they go to draw phase. I assume she might have just played you win or you die just for the five gold. She's got a great haul. Maybe you can get a Tywin or a Cersei out on the board. But will that be enough? Uh, 
one or two if there's more winter. Okay. So he plays his uh, northern keep there, I think it is, to get some gold. Ramsey Snow, oh, ho, 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 ho. with authority, slaps him down on the board. No. Jamie is gone. Sacrifice is not killed or discarded. That's a sacrifice play. Uh, or no, it says it has to be killed or discarded. Oh, okay. Does this go back yeah, Bodyguard does not save from sacrifice. Okay. Oh, just like that. The board is empty on the Lancer side, now sitting at 9 power. Having to start over, basically, here. Will we see a comeback here from the Stark player? I don't know if there is a reset plot in the uh, Lancer player's plot deck, but crossing decks, sometimes they get a little greedy, and they're just thinking they just play all a bunch of rush power gain plots and no resets to get out of situations like this or help their chances, really. Or does she have any more econ plots or she can build a board up with? But then again, the Stark player is only a two power. So, I mean, we could get around to the, you know, the eighth plot where she could drop out of trading again and maybe build up. Sella Baratheon is now on the board for the Lancer player. Three gold remaining. And gets a bodyguard. Ugh. And two gold saved. Is that for a burn man, possibly? She's now going to have to play defensively here and try to, try to build a board back up, hopefully, before the Stark player can win. We do see... Uh, do you see Bran in the discard pile there? So that is a flea bottom target for sure. I think Summer's in there too, so that's a good flea bottom target to help get Bran back to hand. So Wolves of the North coming out on the military challenge. Stealthing Macella, reducing her strength by two. And there's that burn man I assumed was there based on the two gold. Coming in and blocking the unopposed. And I don't think you claim the burn man there. I think you get rid of the bodyguard. But, uh, oh, sorry, intimidate uh, off of Nymeria. I forgot she was in the challenge there. Or I didn't see that. Intrigue with Ramsey Snow, most likely going to go unopposed here. And it's Jano Slint on the claim. And a power with Rob Stark for five. And unopposed on the power challenge. And Stark player now at five power, it looks like. And takes Dominus to get to six. So it's now six power on the Stark side to eight power on the Lancer side. We have ourselves a comeback here. basically happened on a put to the sword and a Ramsey uh, we're what uh, started this this comeback here so the withering cold played to skip the standing phase on the Stark side we got heads on spikes number two from the Lancer player here so Stark player wins based on having less power and chooses himself to go first and a frozen solid grabbed on the heads on spikes. So third heads on spikes miss there. <laughs> yeah, what a different game when the crossing player doesn't see Cersei uh, very early. 
So uh, even those heads on spikes triggers would have all been a power on Cersei at some point. Assuming she didn't have a milk on her. <laughs> but yeah, could have, that could have been the difference to close it out for the Lancer player. But without her on the board or even a tie win, someone else with renown basically. Another way to get power. Uh, just a little too, little too slow there. So nothing to marshal on the Lannister side. Four gold saved on the Stark side. I think we're going to have the same challenge phase over again here. We got the Wolves of the North and Nymeria stealthing and reducing uh, down to one strength Macella. And I'm sure going to intimidate her. That'll go. Uh, I'll go unopposed on that. So we got the bodyguard. Oh, we got Podrick actually saving for two. Intimidating Macella. And an intrigue with Ramsey. No defenders on that. Claim is the only treachery, or the only card in hand, the last treachery is what I was trying to say there. And the power with Rob Stark. Holding back Catelyn there for the dominance win with the gold. <laughs> Problem is, if she saves Podrick to do a challenge like she just said, the power isn't getting through Catelyn. And the military... Eh, you're going to have to deal with Bran probably jumping out of the discard pile of Flea Bottom, standing a wolf, and or... Uh, you might have the military challenge just go through and stand everyone on the Stark player's board, which isn't the craziest thing he's going to win dominance anyway, but... So, Podrick there, blocking the unopposed. And Dominus to the Stark player. He's now at 12 power. Skip the standing phase. Boom. Yeah, I forgot about that plot. So, yeah, you don't want to do the military at the Stark player. He was debating using Fleet Bottom there to bring in the brand to stand a wolf, but he can just do it this phase, I guess. Or this uh, round, sorry. So first snow into breaking ties. So that's how he's going to be able to sacrifice someone to stand his whole board with Rob Stark. <laughs> wow. And first snow is not going to hit anyone on the Stark side. It's actually only going to hit... Uh, Hit the Lancer players' characters, but I mean they're both not loyal, so they could be sent back to hand with uh, with the uh, breaking ties. He's <laughs> gonna save all the gold, no marshalling. Lancer players got three to work with and the Great Hall. First snow, sending them all back. So Lancer board is empty here for the second time. Uh oh, Adrian's under the impression that uh, no extra challenges can be done. Yeah, she realizes the breaking ties, the sacrifice, Rob St or stand leads to all the challenges that he wants to do and definitely win. So congrats to AJ on that win. We'll see him in the finals against the winner of the next video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for all the people who donate on Patreon for supporting the channel, helping offset the cost of the cameras, the lighting, the computers for editing, the traveling to tournaments, hotels, and all that kind of stuff. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.